But in life, there's always a chance to grow. Hey y'all, how you feel? I feel good, I feel good. Welcome, welcome, MBK 2023. Give it up for MBK. I'm excited today. Excited and anxious and nervous and all kind of daggone emotions going on. But God is good. Oh, y'all ain't act like God good in this place. I said, God is good. And he's worthy to be praised. God is so good, man. I'm so excited. My brother Delvin, um, I'm telling you, we've been uh, at it, man, for like nine weeks now. And now, just to see the manifestation, man, of so many great men, so many great uh, leaders, so many great uh, guiders, so many great partners, so many great facilitators. Give it up for everybody in the house. So much support. At this time, we're going to have Pastor Scott. If he would come forward, Pastor Scott. Pastor Scott. Man, I'm going to tell you. This guy right here is an awesome blessing, man, that he just continued to open up his doors and allow us to come in and celebrate, man. We're so honored and pleased and just filled, man, with the things you're doing for us in the community. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, it's an honor to be here. It really is an honor to be able to be a part and open up our doors. And um, I know I'm supposed to pray, but I just want to do one other thing, just because I'm, I'm not... I'm not your stereotypical pastor by uh, a lot of different measures. And uh, one of them, my, my son, he's in eighth grade and he has this thing they, they call, they, they will say, uh, hold on, I gotta make sure I don't say a bad word. Um, L-F-G. And it's let's, and then there's the middle word, and then there's go, let's go. <laughs> and uh, my, my point in all of this is like, we, we got to quit trying to be nice and pretty and all this other junk. Like, we got a LFG. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and that's where I'm at. I, I was jogging through Annapolis, praying for all of us today. I was jogged by public housing. I jogged by rich people. I jogged by BMWs and cars that are barely running and all this stuff. It's going to take all of us. And I just say, like, we, we need you. We need you. It's LFG. It's time to go. And, um, and I'm, and uh, the reason why I say this is there, there's this poem, there's this guy, he wrote this when he was 19 years old, he's going to Harvard, he didn't even, he wrote this poem about this feeling of inadequacy in his own life, but he wanted to keep doing good because we need people that are going to do good. And this is what he said, people are illogical and reasonable and self-centered, love them anyway. If you do good, people will accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Do good anyway. If you are successful, you will win false friends and true enemies. Succeed anyway. The good you do today will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Honesty and frankness make you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyway. The biggest men and women with the biggest ideas can be shot down by the smallest men and women with the smallest minds. Think big anyway. People favor underdogs but follow only top dogs. Fight for a few underdogs anyway. What you spend your years building may be destroyed overnight. Build anyway. People really need help but may attack you if you do help them. Help people anyway. Give the world the best you have and you'll get kicked in the teeth. Give the world the best you have anyway. He wrote it when he was 19 years old and he was in a bookstore or he had a friend um, in San Diego, California that said, hey, I, I saw this in Mother Teresa's um, 
in Calcutta in her orphanage and in her housing for the, those that were death and dying. And Mother Teresa had gotten this poem of this 19-year-old brat punk kid, I bet, at Harvard and uh, put it up on the wall. And it was part of her book. And he didn't even know it like 20 years later. And then he wrote this book based on that. I just say, you just never know the good you do and what could happen. And I just stand here with everybody to say that I got your back. I'm in, I'm in, uh, we, 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 need, we need each other and I'm gonna quit talking because they're gonna get mad at me. I don't wanna get mad, I don't wanna get in trouble. And so, but I just, I say this because there's a, there's, you know, there's a sense that's like, hey, do good, do good. But there's also this like extra and that, that to me is that's the LFG. And I got to say that to myself, like, man, you're a pastor. I'm like, yeah, that's the kind of pastor I am. Let's get, let's get going. And we need you to do good because it's going to take all of us. It will take all of us. It don't matter. You will never have enough degrees. You will never have enough anything. You will never have enough of that. I, that's what I'm praying over you guys today. And I'll just say MSK blew the roof off of this place a couple weeks ago. And so I just give everybody permission just to have some fun and celebrate and do whatever. Step ran from over there to over there. I don't know. Uh, we'll see what happens today. But um, I just want to pray and just very respectfully. I know we have a lot of different folks in here today, but um, we're glad that you're here. We hope this is a place of peace for everybody. So let me just offer this prayer for you all. God, you today, we celebrate your goodness in our lives. We celebrate the peace that we can have into this place, into this time, to be able to celebrate that which you are doing. We thank you for leaders that have stepped up, people that have sacrificed. It's this culmination of all this that we come around and that we might also remember that we are our brothers and sisters keeper, that we belong to each other. And in that spirit, we choose to do good. We want to walk in goodness and rightness, not just because it's convenient, because it ain't all the time, but that you would give us strength together in unison to bring about good in this world and goodness in our community, in our city, in our county. We pray all of this together as one people. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Scott, for that really peaceful led prayer. At this time, we're going to have Tony come up and give us an explanation of why MBK. You know, we done had the MSK, the ladies, and then set the atmosphere and really set the tone for us men. And uh, some people think that men should be the forefront, men should be lead. I believe that men should lead in, in some areas, man, but I believe also that it doesn't matter as long as somebody step out and take the wheel. So we're going to have Tony come up at this time and give us um, YMBK. I'm telling you, man, this is, she my wife, man, but uh, she has a heart for so many people that really is unexplainable. I mean, you're talking about sleepless nights, the phone ringing at three in the morning, going down because bodies laying in the streets, man. Like Pastor Scott said, man, it's going to take each and every one of us, each and every one of us, to help put a piece in to solving some of the problems that we have in our city, in our community, in our county. Come on up, Tony. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening. Loosen up, loosen up. We're here for a great occasion. Yeah. And, and I say that because when somebody dies or somebody get murdered or somebody killed, we got press releases, we got people everywhere. But we in here for some men who decided to invest in themselves. Structure.
culture. Last time I checked, we got a deficit in rehabilitation centers. So today is worthy of the praise. I don't know about y'all. I do not know about y'all. But I'm sick and tired of getting calls from mothers whose fathers and boyfriends have been taken up over drugs. I'm sick and tired of getting calls from mothers and women that, that husbands and boyfriends have went and shot somebody. We dealing with human infrastructure and the only way that we gonna get a hold of it is if we come together and we put some money on the table. These men spent eight weeks, eight weeks, eight weeks, eight weeks. You want to talk about commitment? It's hard to spend eight weeks committed to something when you got children and you got jobs and you got extracurricular activities. It's hard. But these men thought it not robbery to invest in the most important thing, and that's themselves. And I am excited. We had MSK graduation a couple of weeks ago and this place was full. Full! I got a problem with that. Because when it comes to our men, we slipping. But yet we want change. The last I thought is we got to be the change we want to see. Now do we want to continue see killing in the streets? Do we want to keep seeing bodies laying on the ground? Or do we want to see prosperous men investing in themselves, taking the rightful place in society? What you want? Because I ain't here to sugarcoat nothing. Because I'm here to be the change I want to see. I don't know a lot of these men. But I do know one thing. Our men are hurting. A lot of our men don't have a foundation laid. A lot of our men came from broken homes. A lot of our men don't know how to maneuver society. Men, where are you? Where are the ones who made it? Where are the ones who making six figures now? Where are the ones who got healthy homes and healthy families? Where are you, men? Because these men need you. But guess what? We went out and found 11. You hear what I'm saying? We went out and found. We went out and found 11 committed men that will walk with these men. Because see, we always asking somebody to do something, but rarely do we take the time to walk with them and show them how. This is what it's about. Each one reaching one. The word tells me if I see my brother falling, go and pick him up. It don't say turn your back and talk about him. It say pick him up. I'm upset right now, I am. Because our world is going to hell in a handbasket if we don't step up and take our rightful places. Hundreds of people was invited to this event. Don't matter that you didn't show up. But we can't expect for people to give back when we ain't willing to give back. And that's the bottom line. It's all about relationship. They call me up, Tony, can you give me some men? Can you give me some women? I need a photo op. I need to do this. I need to do that. It ain't about photo ops no more. For me, it's about change. What you willing to do to change? What you willing to do to help? So you ask me why MBK? I had a whole speech written. But you ask me why MBK? This is why MBK. Because ain't nobody showing up for our men. This is why. MSK is representing their men. They graduated a couple weeks ago. They are in the house. Because guess why? Because guess why? They was broken too. They know what it feels like to have nobody walk with them. They know what it feels like to have their mother turn their backs on them. They know what it feels like to have the mother choose a man over them. These men know what it feels like to have to be the men in their homes. So you ask me why? This is why. When God gave me this vision, I said, how am I going to do this? Because he gave me the vision for MSK first. In the middle of COVID. In the, no, in the beginning of COVID. He gave me a dream. He laid the whole thing out. He said, now go do it. 
I'm like, Lord, I ain't got no money. You know it's COVID, they tripping when you're trying to have something now. You can... He said, this not supposed to be online, in person. And don't you know, MSK started in 2020 at the height of COVID, nobody got sick, and 15 women graduated. <laughs> So this is what we're going to do, because y'all haven't heard enough from me. MBK started with 10 men, and we know everybody ain't going to make it, because everybody not ready for whatever reason. And we don't discount them. Guess what? We said, come back next time when you're ready. We want men who are ready to make a change. And sometimes, you know what, to be honest, people don't even know they ready to need to make a change until they come in connection with somebody and something sparks them, right? Just like when Elizabeth was talking to Mary, her baby jumped. So sometimes when a guy is talking to the partners, they baby jump. And they realize, look, I've been in this thing too long. And it's time for me change. So I'm excited. Excited is an understatement. Women, I don't take nothing from y'all, but it's something about when a man get they self together. <laughs> and take their money and take their rightful place in society and do what they supposed to do and the world is a better place. I'm also here to introduce the coordinators of MBK. MBK was supposed to come to fruition in 2021. I had everybody picked out. I had the men picked out who was going to coordinate it and God said, no, that ain't them. And I said, God, I'm going to wait till you send me who you want me to lead this. And I'm gonna let y'all know, I don't mind waiting on the Lord. I don't mind waiting, because guess what? Get le left to my own devices, I can mess something up. If y'all know me, I ain't afraid to jump out there. I ain't afraid to stand by myself. And I ain't afraid to stand on behalf of the people. So if you know me, you know I ain't scared. I ain't scared. So this is the deal. 2023, he said, I got you, man but he planned it out. I talked to Step in 2021, he like, I ain't trying to do that. I got a business, I got a job, I got the family. That ain't for me, okay? So I had to give him some time for God to speak to him because he had already spoken to me, right? So then I saw Delvin. I grew up with Delvin. Went to school with his sister, right? Watch everything that Delvin had went through, right? But it was time now because he had transitioned over. Saw him at a... Uh, Naples Family Day, and I'm dancing. I'm like, yo, I need to talk to you later. Because God showed me my people before he planned it out in my face, right? Then I called my nephew. I said, yo, I need you. And I tell you, it's just, it's not ordinary people that God chooses. It's the ones who got the most issues and the most problems. But you know why he put them on display? Because he wants to show you the how they change. It wasn't nobody but the Lord. My husband, she coordinators, William Pratt, my husband. 15 years old when I met him. Drug addict, drug dealer, womanizer, and I ain't afraid to tell it. Because guess what? God fixed him up, put him back on the potter's wheel, and he stands here now as a family man, as a business owner. Nobody but God. But then it's Delvin, right? Delvin was a addict. Delvin was, and, and I know they don't mind telling me telling a little bit of their story. Guess why? Because they'll tell y'all self. He was an addict. He was a dealer. He was a womanizer. He was a whole lot of stuff, right? Went to prison. Ha, shit, but God. Look at him now, right? I told you God will put them back on the potter's wheel, clean them up, and send them out. The man now is on fire. He's working back where he first was killing people. Who that sound like Paul, right? That sound like Paul, Kill, killing Christians. But God caught him on Damascus Road one day, and he said, hey, I have need of you. Stop the 
him in his tracks. He wasn't ready. But see, sometimes we ain't ready when God come arrest us, right? But guess what? He put Delvin on the potter's wheel. Now Delvin working with the same men that he once was one time. And he sold out for it. Anytime I call Delvin and say I have need of you, can you, where you want me at? That's step. That's Delvin. But then there's Teddy, my nephew, the third coordinator who's not here, who's away at a real estate class in Atlanta. Come on, let me tell you what God can do. And he was a real hustler. One of the best drug dealers that you could know. But see, what y'all slipping on is them drug dealers, they real our business owners. We just need to take time to hook them up with somebody who gonna convert that thing to a legal business. So yeah, he was, that's what he was. But now he's a homeowner. <laughs> he's a journeyman, HVAC licensed journeyman. He's a husband. And now we're going so he can buy some real estate to become economically sound. Those are your coordinators. So just in case, just in case you want to know why MBK, look at all these men sitting in front of you. And that is my why. Thank you. Oh. And now I need to introduce Delvin, because Delvin going to get up here and talk for himself. Because see, when God converts you, then he gives you a voice. So nobody needs to tell his story and speak for him now, because he can speak for himself. So without further ado, give Delvin Johnson a hand. I know I've got tears in my eyes, but don't mind my tears. My tears no longer pain, it's a joy. Yeah. Um, I was an addict. I spent 22 years in prison off and on. I continuously left that in that same path until one day, at 45 years old, I caught 10 years. At that time, I said, um, I asked the God of my understanding to just take the pain away. Help me regurgitate the pain so that I can live a better life. October 28th of this year, I'll celebrate eight years of uninterrupted clean time. I, I remember when I came home, everybody thought that I would go back to who I was. And I remember a guy say, um, come on, Jojo boy, have a drink. And the first thing I said to him, what value would that drink have on my life? And from that point on, I knew I had to separate ties from some time. They say change people, places, and things, but I'm a firm believer. If once you change you, the things you do gonna change, the people you be around gonna change, and the places you go gonna change. So once I started to make that change in my life, I started to feel different. I started to do things different. I started working with people just like myself. That is my passion today. I have judges that call my phone. One time they only called me to give me a sentence. Today they call my phone to ask me to come and speak to the people of drug courts and things of that nature, right? So I'm truly blessed today. I'm in the process of doing something that I thought I'd never do, and I'm in the process of opening a halfway house to help people just like myself. Right? So God is good. Um, my life is good. I'm truly happy. I know my little sister over there, man, week after week she called me, she say, what happened to MBK? What happened to I say, please don't stop talking. You know, but that's my heart. We've been together, man, forever. She's been, she's been in my corner. When I didn't have a place to go, she always gave me a place to go. You know, she, when I needed a hug, she was always there wherever I was at, my little sister would come from. And I'm telling you, I couldn't thank you enough, and I love you so much, right? 
So I'm totally grateful for these opportunities. When I saw Miss Tony, and I'm telling you, when she came past, she was dancing down the walkway. And I walked past, I said, what's up, Miss Tony? She said, I'm gonna see you, and kept on dancing. I said, well, well, she'll see me when she see me, right? But when she called me and she said, Delvin, I want you to be one of the coordinators of this program, that was priceless to me. I'm MBK for life. I'm MBK for life, right? This is my foundation that I stand on. I'm so grateful for the sisters, and I'm gonna leave with this. In order to build a home, you must have three parts of it. You must have your queens, your kings, and your princes and princesses, right? So once she built a home for the female, she started building for the male. Now it's time to get our youth so we can turn this thing around and make change. Thank you. Oh, come on, y'all can do better than that. You, we talking about a man that changed his life, who allowed God to change his life. Woo! Recovering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, oh man. Wow. It's so many testimonies. I could just pass this mic right down the front aisle. Testimony after testimony. And the word tells us what? We overcome the adversary, our devil, the devil who lurks, looming to seek whom he may devour. But our word says we overcome the adversary by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. Thanks for that testimony, Delvin. Amen. Whew. Oh, my God. My God, my God. We're going to have a selection by Willie. And Willie probably take the roof off this place. Go ahead, Willie, do your thing. I'm surrendered now 
so good. Boy, Delvin, back up with me because we're going to have our valedictorian and our salutatorian to come up. But Delvin worked directly with these two guys, so I'm going to uh, give the mic over to him and he can call them up and when he sees fit. First, let me say thank you to God Disney Facility, Miss Debbie, Miss Nora, Miss Jennifer, for each week, week in and week out. Get them prayed. Give them thanks. Because um, without these ladies, Miss Noah, week in and week out, that's my supervisor. She calls me, Delvin, what time I got to have them there? She come from home to make sure they get to the program. That's dedication for us, man. I appreciate you so much. You know, I truly, truly appreciate that. Um, Miss Debbie, um, she, you know, she's been there since I started when I was a client there, and now I work there, and she's always been on my side. I'm truly grateful to Miss Hardy. She's the supervisor on the floor. Every Saturday morning, she's giving me a spot where I do the groups down there now to give me more educate myself in the field that I want to be in. I'm so grateful for y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all. Thank all of y'all so much, but um, if Miss Norma will come up. We just want to present you with these flowers because it take a special person. It take a special person to come in on their day off. That's commitment. That's real love. That shows how she feel about these guys right here. Like her son, like her brother. Hey, everybody don't do that. Give up their time. Everybody looking for a paycheck. Everybody want to know what I'm getting paid in it. But she came in on her day off. see these guys make it to a place 
where they can commit to change. I'm so grateful for you, sis. Thanks for all you do and continue to do. I told my wife, Tony, I said, we got to hook you up with MSK. Yeah. Somebody that day gone committed. You got to be linked up. All right. Um, we going to start with uh, Mr. Ronald. Hold on for a minute. Let me tell him something. Hey, Miss Tony, you remember when we first came up there and got him? This brother sat back in the back with his hands crossed. That means he closed. He ain't say nothing with a mug on his face. But eight weeks later, he's the valedictorian of MBK, Mr. Ronald Adams. Appreciate y'all for this. Well, my name is Ronald Ellison from Baltimore. Um, I never thought I would be sitting up here uh, doing something like this. Um, I appreciate Delvin, Self, Teddy, he's not here right now, and for giving me this opportunity to uh, you know experience something like this. You know, um, I come from the streets of Baltimore. You know, that's neither here or there, but. This is something new. I never experienced this. So I got got the chance of being in a class with a, a group of men that's that helped me in so many ways. I can't even I can't even explain. Um, um, uh, I'm in a pro, we kept we we in a program that you know that helps us get out of prison. And that's my case manager, Miss right there, Miss Debbie. I'm putting you on the spot. I love you, Mom. I thank you. You got Miss Jen over there, Miss Jen too. You too, Miss Jen. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I write everything down. This is just what we work on in class because we they, they really they really dig into us. Um, we work on keeping it real and raw. That's dealing with self-reflection. Uh, my past is not my present. Moving moving beyond moving beyond what we used to be. Who told you that? The lies they, sh they, the lies they shaped us to be. Well, the, the lies that they shaped us. My other side, who's talking to you? Conflict resolution. I'm more than my hand. What is, my, what is the plan? Goals and vision setting. Financial literacy is all about the Benjamins. <laughs> Laying the foundation is in your faith. You know, these, these are things that they helped us, that they work on with us in class, you know? And I'm I highly appreciative. I thank y'all. Thank you. Next, we um, have the salute of toy. It's one guy, man, I'm telling you, if you make him smile, man, you did a job for the day. It takes an eight-hour job to get this brother to smile. But um, he'll come, when I come to the bubble, when I come in and get in the bubble, he'll come to me and we'll talk while I go to the room and we'll talk. And um, the brother's full of, full of knowledge, full of knowledge, and um, he has a lot of wisdom beyond his age. So without, without being further ado, Mr. Jordan Hall. of you today um you know i could have not done this without my mother and she is here today and <laughs> like i want to talk about strong woman that woman has been here through it all and she is here today and i just i praise every inch of ground she walks on man i really do my best friend through it all and um you know, uh, I believe that when I came into this program, I was kind of an optimist. You know, I was always looking for the, uh, the differences instead of the similarities because I thought to myself that there's no way these guys have been where I've done and done what I've been, you know, all of that stuff. And uh, <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> you know, um, these men have showed me things and taught me things that, you know, I've realized that we're more alike than we are different. I don't care, you can come from California to Maryland, we all share the same pain. 
You know, it's like, uh, it doesn't make a difference. Um, you know, and the gratitude that I share for Tony and Seth and uh, Delvin and, and all the other guys that are involved, Miss Nora, Miss Debbie, Jen, everybody, all my men here. I mean, they really, we have all like came together and have done this with unity and it really is something special. Um, and just to say that, you know, I realized that when this was all over, what did I gain from this? Um, I look back and I think like, well, I've met a bunch of men that have my back through it all. And, and they tell me like, Jordan, it's going to be all right. You're not different. You know, like what you're going through is nothing different than anything we have all been through. And uh, with that, it was kind of like having open arms and really being able to open up to some of these men and share with them some of the things that I've been through, man. And they really continuously helped me, all of them. Thank you very much. That's Jordan, boy, I'm gonna tell you right now, my man. My man, my man, my man. All right, we got the elected officials in the house. If they wanna come up, Shanika, Shanika. So I go to a lot of graduations, but none like this. Um, none like this. Um, I'm here because I want you to know that we have your back, as it's been said. When this is done, we're gonna give you a piece of paper and it's gonna have the seal of the state of Maryland on it. And every time you look at it, I want you to remember what it felt like to be proud of yourself today. What it felt like to be proud of the man sitting next to you. What it felt like to trust the man sitting behind you. And I want that to just be a token and a reminder that no matter what happens, you can always find yourself back to a place where you are proud of yourself. That's what I want you to remember. Um, when I was asked to speak at this, I said, I don't feel adequate. I don't feel prepared. I don't know what it's like to be a man in this world. What I do know is what our communities look like when you are not in your rightful place. I know what our schools look like when you are not in your rightful place. I know what our business is, I know what our economy, I know what it looks like when men are not in their rightful place. And it drives me every day to create a space and an opportunity for you to take the space that is yours. Pastor Scott said it when he was on this stage, the world needs you, our communities need you. We cannot do this if the right hand and the left hand aren't both working. So that's why I'm so thankful for Tony, for Step, for you, Mr. Delvin. I can't wait to hear what Donald Snowden has to say to you all. Um, but I'm so thankful for every mentor in this program who has given you the tools that you need to succeed. When I thought about the most important men in my life, they are my father, my husband, and my son. And from each of them, what I have learned from my husband, who was a basketball standout, he got to go to college for free, but he never stops at great when he can be excellent. And he pushes me to be excellent. So know that that's inside of you. What I learned from my son, my son had a learning disability when he was in school, and he didn't want anybody to know. So he was counting underneath of the table. He was counting behind his back, but he wouldn't show his classmates that he still needed to use his fingers because that pride that a man has, he had even when he was eight years old. But what he had to do instead was be the hardest worker that there was. He would come early, he would stay late, and he would work hard so he could accomplish his goals. And now he just finished his freshman year at Morgan State University studying civil engineering. What I learned from my dad is to have a big heart and give back. When I was a kid, my dad was a pastor and we were in every community you could imagine. If it was school supplies, if it was food, if it was clothing, if it was just a prayer and a hug, we were giving back all the time every day. Because he remembered when he dropped out of high school because he didn't have new shoes to wear on the first day of school. And he said, I'm not gonna go and be embarrassed. He remembered when he was a kid and his parents divorced and they moved to the back of Newtown 20 
when his mom was putting food on the table for them, but not for herself. And he said, now that God has blessed me, I will use that blessing to be a blessing to someone else. So I encourage you to do that today. Congratulations. This is your state delegate, Shanika D. Henson of District 30A. But I also call her my friend yes. because Delegate Henson has been with us since the inception in 2020. And when I call and say I need, I don't have to worry about whether she's going to come. I don't have to worry about whether she's going to deliver. Because not only does she deliver for MSK, but she delivers for our state. So thank you, Delegate. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rhonda Pendell Charles. I'm your city councilwoman representing Ward 3 in the parole area. And this is Alderman Gay, who represents Ward 6 in the Eastport area. So we're here to congratulate you all for everything you've done. The word that seems to kind of resonate today is change. Changing a whole lot of things that we're proud to say and proud to see what's going on here in Annapolis in our area. I have a poem that I'm going to read entitled Change the World by Wayne Visser. Let's change the world, let's shift it. Let's shake it and remake it. Let's rearrange the pieces, the patterns in the maze, the reason for our days in ways that make it better, in shades that make it brighter, that make the burden lighter because it's shared, because we dared to dream and then to sweat it, to make our mark and not regret it. Let's plant a seed and humbly say, I changed the world today. Let's change the world, let's lift it. Let's take it and awake it. Let's challenge every leader, the citadels of power, the prisoners in the tower, the hour of needs upon us. It's time to raise our voices, to stand up for our choices. Because it's right, because we fight for all that's just and fair, for a planet we can share. Let's join the cause and boldly say, we'll change the world today. Let's change the world, let's love it. Let's hold it and unfold it. Let's redesign the future, the fate of earth and sky, the existential why. Let's fly to where there's hope, to where the world is greener, where air and water's cleaner. Because it's smart to make a start, to fix what we have broken, our children's wish unspoken. Let's be the ones who rise and say, we change the world today. Thank you, Rhonda. I'll be very brief. Um, I'm just, you know, so ecstatic about this program, obviously, and, and proud of uh, the individual that came forward to lead it. I think for me, obviously, uh, growing up in a single parent household for the majority of my life, um, you know, oftentimes for me, trying to find male role models, I had to visualize them on TV or in books. And so with programs like this, to build uh, mentors, male, male mentors, strong in our communities, as Delvin said, that can go back and lead the youth, I think is so important uh, because that's what we need more than other. Um, and particularly with our middle school and our high school um, youth here in the community, uh, programming, uh, mentorship, therapy, all of those things together. And so the fact that you took the next step um, and you know are making sure that young kids don't have to grow up visualizing their mentors but having them in their communities is uh, so important and so I'm incredibly proud of you all thank you very much but at this time we skipped over uh, we skipped over um, our guiders, uh, if um, William Rao would come up, y'all can come up together, and Phil Colbert go just give us a little bit from a guiders perspective. And then guiders, be ready, because we could just have all y'all come up, just so y'all can be seen. How's everybody doing? It's good to see you all. 
So I don't know, you you know, you don't play fair. You were supposed after, you want us to come after all that. You should have put us at the very top of the program. <laughs> but we, we're gonna do the best that we can. Um, but it is an honor to be here. It's an honor to be a part of this program. Uh, um, Pastor Scott, thank you for opening your house to us, sir. Uh, Pratt, William, I call him Pratt, and Tony, uh, we're thankful, and I speak on behalf of the Goddess, of course, we're thankful for your vision. So, uh, William, he called me uh, a couple months ago, and he said, you know, I want you to be a part of this program. I want you to help out. I said, yeah, okay, all right, I can do that. So then um, he sent me a little outline of the program and so forth and and um, you know I'm like okay I can do that um, he called me say hey you know what I need to come and say this is after now we've completed eight weeks can you say a little something to graduation I say I don't like public speaking I didn't tell him that but I say yeah okay I can do that but let me tell you when he calls and sometimes that may be a year or two, three years sometimes to go by before we even talk on the phone. But he made a deposit into me 12 years ago, which I've never forgotten. He probably forgot that, but I've never forgotten. I met Pratt through Elliot, who I grew up with. And I grew up with Elliot's cousin in parole. And let me tell you the kind of people that Pratt and Tony are. And I was going through some personal stuff and I called him one day and I said, man, look, what you, where you at? Oh, I'm out with my wife, we celebrating our anniversary. I said, oh my goodness. He said, what's up? I said, nothing. He said, no, what's going on, what's wrong? I said, man, I just need somebody to talk to. And you know what she did? She brought him over to where I was on that anniversary. And because you made that deposit in me, I have never ever forgotten that. And I'm so grateful for you both, thank you so much. When he called and asked me to uh, participate in this program as a guider, again, I said, okay, sure, I can do that. But I will say, once the program kicked off and then we started to attend the sessions, and as guiders, of course, we act as support for the participants. But I can say this, as guiders, we actually served in not only the capacity of a guider, but also in the capacity of a participant, right? because we too learn the, to the participants. We wanted to let you know that we are proud of you. Keep moving forward. Don't give up, keep the faith. Be that change that you want to be. Be that, be that man that you want your son to be. Be that man that you want your daughter, your granddaughter to be. And so we're proud of you. John Maxwell uh, coined the phrase about lifting lids. And I thank you all we thank you as guiders. We thank you for lifting our lids. And being a lid lifter is basically encouraging someone to go beyond where they already are, to get them past that point and past those obstacles that prevent them from moving forward. And so with that said, we thank you all. And I am going to turn it over to Mr. Rowley. He can take it from here. Thank you. I, see, look, I, I, I already got the look. I felt it when I was over there. So I, I wrote down what I'm going to say. Because, and I know it's funny, but, for, but from my heart, y'all, there's so much. And I know you felt this. I know everyone who spoke has felt this way. We could talk for about, about three hours about our experience with this because it is uh, incredibly personal, spiritual, um, just so many different things, but I'll stick to the script. Um, oh, before I start. <laughs> I have to do this because of something Tony said earlier. Can everybody please stand? And look around. Just look around, look beside you. And I mean look beside you with not your eyes, but with your third eye, your heart. And I promised I wouldn't get emotional up here, but um, Tony said the fact that this room is not full is disappointing, but I want you all to look around and realize this is your village. This is your village. Look around. This is your village. 
And there's an old African proverb that says it takes a village. And wh whoever is in the room needs to be here. And God has led them here. And so we're here. So if it was five of us, it's all good. That is no example or measurement of the success of this program and to what these men mean to us. So I just wanted to say that. And you all can sit down. Um, so I go in my backyard and I take some me time and meditate and look in the trees and listen to the birds. And it came to me that you do not have to go it alone. So I'm looking at y'all right here. Right? You do not have to go it alone. Uh, my brothers, seek counsel of one another, for therein lies the way out of error and futile repentance. The wisdom of the many is your shield against tyranny. For when we turn to one another and seek counsel in one another, we reduce the number of our enemies. I am proud and honored and grateful to have been a part of this program and to have had the opportunity and the blessing to be a guider in what has been a truly transformative experience with my brothers. So from day one, I came to realize that I was actually getting more, and you said this. I'm gonna be honest. I believe that I got more out of this program than I'm a brag, my guider who, I mean my partner who was valedictorian. Um, I'm just messing with y'all. Um, but in all seriousness, I believe I got more out of this than, than most of my life's experiences up until this point. Because we can't measure it by career, we can't measure it by whether we can pay our bills, we can't measure it by people that like us or how we look in the mirror. It is really about what we're able to embody and then impart. And that's it. So I want to thank you, Step. I want to thank you, Delvin. I want to thank you, Miss Tony. I have to call you Miss Tony now because people are calling you that. Um, and most importantly, I want to thank all of you all, not just those who were partners and participants in the program, but guiders and anyone else, because we didn't mention a lot of the people that we had to come and speak. And I was in class, and I got a lot out of that, and I learned some things about myself. I learned some things about people I grew up with, like D. I mean, we grew up together, you know? Um, this is the last thing I want to say. Oh, and also I want to thank Teddy. Teddy isn't here, but I'm going to keep mentioning Teddy's name because Teddy is a quiet person, and his presence is, like, so strong even when he's not talking. And so, I, you know, we have to keep remembering, even though Teddy's not in the room, that he, he's in the room. He who understands you is greater kin to you than your own brother. For even when your own kindred neither understand you nor know your true worth. Okay? even when that is the case. So as men, what's, what's incredible about this program to me also is, I don't know about you all, and you can, you can testify or, or let me know if you feel the same way, but the spaces where we get to talk about our feelings, our emotions, things that we're um, not so strong on and things that we're confused on, whenever you have that space to do that, it, you cannot measure that. And I want you to really think about spaces in our world and everyday life where we get an opportunity to do that. And that's where we grow, that's where we get closer. So to the partners, thank you all for teaching me. And thank you all for your strength. Um, that uh, is emblematic of the strength it takes to navigate this world, okay? I, I truly thank you all for doing that because what you're doing, I'm so proud of. I'm proud of you, not as a person who stands in a, in a different place, but I'm proud of you because I was right there 
and I heard the words that you said out of your mouth, and, and those words impacted me personally. So remember, you do not have to go it alone. Thank you all. Come on up, guys. Come on up. Come on up. Stay up, y'all. Stay up, y'all. Stay up. And while they coming up, I just want to take this time to uh, come on up, uh, uh, I just want to take this time um, and thank Pastor Chris, who opened up his doors and allowed us a place to have MBK. So. We so grateful, man, for people that like Pastor Scott and Pastor Chris for opening up their doors for us. Yeah, we're taking pictures, guys. <laughs> y'all, y'all waiting. Y'all waiting for me to say something? Like, okay, all right. Well, we're taking pictures. All right, we just took a couple pictures. All right, y'all, we finish. We good. All right, these are our goddess. Give it up for our goddess. These guys committed their time, their gifts, and didn't ask for one dollar except for Sharon. No, that's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And when we said valedictorian, salutatorian, and we picked those couple guys out, that don't mean that each and every one of these guys sitting on this front pew didn't push and do their best and could have very well been valedictorian or salutatorian. All of y'all are special to us, man, and it's meant a lot to us. Absolutely. And like Will was saying, man, um, I got a lot out of this, man, and, and y'all really poured a lot into me. Delvin spoke about uh, Jordan. Just a wealth of knowledge, man. We just appreciate each one of y'all that have opened up and shared with us, man, and poured out your heart. I'm just so grateful today. So with no further ado, we got a speaker, my cousin, Donald Snowden who didn't seem at robbery. When I asked him, he said, hey, let me check the dates, because that's the proper thing to do, because a lot of times when somebody asks you to do something, oh, yeah, I'll do it, and then comes, oh, the last minute, you got dates mixed up, confused and everything. So he's a man, a real man, a committed man, a family man, a loving man, a sacrificing man. And when I say sacrifice, and I, I'm not saying that lightly, because I'm talking about a man who just had a newborn baby and live in North Carolina. And he said, yes, he put his family on a plane and flew him up here. And he drove up, picked them up at the airport and came to share with us on today. I'm so grateful for my brother, my cousin, that do so many great things for my life. He inspired me. I'm older than him, man, but he speaks so much life into me. I love you, Donald. Come on up, man. And, and I'm sure he'll tell you a little bit about the programs that he has or whatever. Can y'all hear me all right? <clears throat> the weight of change, the weight of change, the weight of change. I love that this is a small group because these people that are here are the ones that are invested. You invest one in yourself, and then you invest in those around. When you're doing something right, it's not always a lot of people around. When we're doing stuff wrong, it's a crowd. 
Some point you out and say, oh, I saw you. And some say, oh, man, that was dope. Keep going. And you going 100 miles the wrong way. And they all right with that. But when you get into a place where you find your circle is small, you're in a good place. Good men live in small circles. Your family. I can't wait to get home at the end of my day. To my the love of my life, my children. I can't wait to get home. That's the smallest circle I got. And my dad. And I'm at peace. And one of the things that I want to tell you guys is I grew up in Eastport, Annapolis, Harbor House, around the corner. <laughs> Delvin was my OG. <laughs> and if we don't know what OG is, we'll get into it later. <laughs> so I was this tall watching him in his space and everybody else that was in that space. And for some reason, 20, 30 years later, we're in the same space <laughs> in a different place. Huh. Step and Tony, besides my aunts and my uncles and my other cousins, they have been together longer than anybody I've known <laughs> to the point that I thought that they were brother and sister when I was a kid. <laughs> but one of the things that I learned about this program, which makes it so amazing, is one word. And that one word is life. I'm sure y'all hear that word. You have life, and it means you might go to prison. You have life, which means you got to look within. But the thing about the word life, for me, and this is what I use in my youth leadership program, it's an acronym. Life is not a word. It's an acronym. The L is look. That means you look around, you look at yourself. The I is inside. The F is for, and the E is for everything. When you are moving in this world, you have to look inside for everything. Nothing is outside. Until you change, you have to look inside. When you're doing all the things you want to do and you have to make that decision, because <laughs> you know the best and worst decision you make, you make when nobody's watching. You say, you know what? I'm going to look inside and what does this tell me? And based on that, you make a decision. So when you think about the word life, you look inside for everything. And when you gentlemen decided, you know what? Something has to be different. You start looking within. And the, the, the spirit within you is powerful. Because the same people and the same person and the same individuals that can live a life over here, you change and you live a life over there, but guess what? You needed it all because God does not waste anything on anybody. Everything that you go through is for a specific reason. And what it does is it allows you to have self-awareness self-inflection and then you elevate to the next level so we have the basketball game on playoffs on right now 
And I thought about it last night as the game was on. In most sports, you play for a little while, and then you have halftime. You guys have played for a little while. We've all played for a little while. And then we have halftime. And what do we do at halftime? Exactly right. <laughs> we go in and we make adjustments. The team is doing this over here. The guy's doing that over there. You didn't run the play right. You let me down. You missed the shot. It's halftime. This is your halftime. And then you have your coaches come in because you notice at halftime, all the players come in and they talk to each other and they go back and forth. And then finally the coach comes in. And you know what the biggest coach is, is the coach in your mind. Because now you got to be receptive. I got knocked off. We're down. I got years on my head. I got to go away. I got caught. But now it's time for me to start listening like, okay, I need to get out of this. I need to do something better. And then you know what you say? You know what? Your coach walks in and he says, guys, what's the first thing most coaches say? Guys, we're all right. We're all right. We just have to do a few things. And it's never big things, but it's the mundane. It's the things that we just don't want to do every day. Maybe we want to do it some days. We just don't want to do it every day. But as a man, it requires us to do certain things every day. And when we do those things, and we do them with the goodness of our heart, we're genuine about what we're doing, we're loving about what we're doing, we do it as a team, we all succeed. Man say, you know what, I've never been a part of nothing like this. This is his halftime. He been out playing. He can educate us on every rule of the game he played. Everybody can. And then we come in and our coaches come in and our guiders come in, our facilitators come in, and they say, you know what? Here's what we need to do. And the only reason you're receptive to it is because you've looked inside and you've decided that, you know what? Left to my own devices, like Tony said, I'm not going to get it right. But you did get it right because you're still living. Don't ever feel like you didn't get it right. Don't ever feel like you failed. We did things that we're not proud of, but we need all of that to make us who we are now. Jordan said, you know what? I'm going to these programs and these people, they don't know what I've been through. And then you talk to somebody like Adele, and you're like, oh, guess it ain't that bad after all. Because we're still living, we're still walking, we're still moving, we're still getting better, we're still progressing. So just look at this as halftime of a great game. This is a great, we in a battle, this is a dog fight. We down by maybe one or two points. That's it. We ain't down as far as you think. Rock bottom ain't that far for nobody. At all. Anything can happen to any of us at any time. And guess what? We got to go in for halftime. We got to regroup. So just remember, in this life, everything that you do between the day you're born and the day you leave here is met for you to go through. You know, they call it a dash in between your birth date and your death date. That's life. It shouldn't even be a dash for me. That word is life. And what you made of yourself in that life is up to you, up to the people that are surround you. Your why is your strongest thing that makes your life worth living. So sometimes we can't see it for ourselves, but when I look at my children, 
when I look at the love of my life, when I look at my family, them hard days, and you say, you know what? <laughs> it's not about me today. It's about everybody else because that's going to get me to the next day. Some days you just don't want to get out of bed. But we have to. And that's the have to when I say as a man, there are certain things we just have to do. But to have a circle of supporters, guiders, friends, that's what keeps us going. Your family, that's what keeps you going. Those are the people you cleave to. That man say for all the things that he's done, his mother has never left his side. Unconditional love is we feel like is a love that God gives us. Parents give to their children. But if we look at ourselves, we should be giving that love to everybody else too. Because we've slipped. We've fallen. Did we want everybody to just pile on when we had a problem? When we wanted to go in the house and be seen and lock ourselves away? No, we did not. So you got to give them people the same grace that you want when you're down. And when you come out in that second half of your life, that's the time that it takes for you to change your life. That's the time where you leave the legacy, you leave the mark of the man that you were intended to be. And when I say intended to be, it's everything from start to finish. It's amazing to me how when you are in a certain place or a certain status in life, people get to look at you on a particular pedestal or platform. But if you understand people's stories, that's what makes them relatable. That's what makes them understandable. When you think about how these people go through the things that they go through and they persevere and they get to a place where we see them, we send them in one space, but we never saw them in that other space. So today, as you guys move on and you go throughout the rest of this journey and you come and you give back, I want you to take everything that you can remember in your life that got you to the point where you are today. And when you take that, package it up, bottle it up, and sell it. And when I say sell it, I mean when you talk to another gentleman and you say, you know what, man, I know exactly what you're going through. When you talk to another woman and you say, you know what, here you go. Here's a bottle of love. I know exactly what you're going through. When I can give you a big hug and say, you know what? Hey, we all right. I know exactly what you're going through. That's what you do with those years of your life. And when you take those years of your life and you bottle them up and you sell them, then you will get your reap. Because why? You reap. So now it's time to sow. Now it's time to plant. All of our seeds don't spring up, but the ones that do create a small circle like this. So I thank you guys for adding to the pot, the pool of life. Nothing is wasted. And we all need, like they say, everything to make this world go round. We need each one of you to make this world go round because you would do the world a disservice if you didn't give them your gift. Because I can't write that book for you. I can't tell them your story. I can't walk down that street like you did. I can't do what you did. I can't get up here and demand a crowd like you do. I try. <laughs> But those stories, those people, give what they give because why? That's their gift. You have your own gift and the world needs it. And I say again, 
Always remember when you're sitting by yourself and you're trying to figure it out, look inside. Just look inside. It's there. You know what you want to do. You know what your intentions are. You know how you want to live. You know the man you want to be. And then with a little bit of seasoning, we marinate and we just come out shining. And when we take that and give it to the rest of the world, it'll be 20 more you like, y'all. This graduation will grow every year. Their graduation has grown every year. And as y'all give back, you create more people who give back. As y'all become guiders, you create more participants. Because why? It's your story. Your story will reach somebody that his can't reach, that mine can't reach. Somebody will hear you say something and you'll say it a certain way. And they'll be like, man, I know exactly what they're talking about. And somebody could have been preaching them to the sense that were blue in the face, but couldn't get across to them. So that's why we need everyone. So guys, I am super happy for you. All the things that you have gone through in life, in this journey, these eight weeks that y'all have put in, the, the commitment. Y'all made that commitment to yourself. You just had a place to show up to. You just had people that were already there. Because when the student is ready, the teacher appears. So y'all ready to go. Halftime. Let's get back out. Do what you want to do. The way you want to do it. You do it gracefully. You do it humbly. And you always remain thankful that you still have another day because everybody don't make it home at the end of their day. Everybody don't get up to go to work the next day. But we do. We got that chance. This family of mine, I'm grateful to. My aunts, my uncles, this town, this town has given me everything. I've been in North Carolina for 20 years and people say, oh, you're from North Carolina? No, I'm from Annapolis, Maryland. <laughs> well, how long you been living here? Oh, I've been here 20 some years. Well, 18 years. But you don't feel like you're from North Carolina? No, <clears throat> not, not even close. <laughs> because where I got my start here has molded me. The mistakes that I've made that I can have been corrected on has molded me. The things that I did wrong that I got to learn from has molded me. I have halftime all the time because why? I'm not around my family every day. So every time I think about the chance that I get to come home, the chance that I get to see y'all, the chance that I get to give back, the chance that I get to just come and learn, all the things that you guys have done and all the things that you worked through it's been amazing. And the fact that you show up for eight weeks and you do it continuously, you give of yourself and you're vulnerable, that takes a lot. So this is about you guys. This is about you guys. And to have people who stand behind you when you're doing something that's right and they give you a platform to do it, well, you, you can't ask for nothing better. And what I've learned as I've gotten older is we don't look for more friends as we get older. We look for leadership. We want leaders. We don't want friends. Friends can tell us anything. But a leader is going to stand behind you and say, you know what? Nah, I think we should probably go this way. And then you take that wisdom and knowledge and you use it for what you need to use it for within yourself. So again, I thank you. I can't wait till the next graduation. I can't wait to see how many of you guys have bring, that bring people into this program. So when they stand up here and they're talking, they're talking about you. Saying, hey, I thank him. Because we all learn from everybody. So before I leave today, just remember one thing. Look inside for everything. Thank you. Certificate time. What a good word.
What a good word. I know it was a good word for me because it was like confirmation to our, uh, our last session, uh, Faith is My Foundation. And, and Donald came and touched on everything that Troy touched on last night. It was totally amazing. But I just want to thank all of our facilitators that came and facilitated these classes, man. But at this time, we're going to get the um, certificates up and uh, we're going to call y'all by name. By your government name. Yeah. You working on this side. We just want y'all to know that y'all are so special that we brought the, the city officials, the county officials, and the state officials to give you certificates. So when you look at those, look at the representation that you are representing your city, your county, and your state. And not only that, when you go over there to your celebration, each of you will be getting a computer to take home with you. So when the next pandemic comes and everything's shut down and we have to work from home and our kids have to go to the doctors from home and we have to go to the doctors at home, we'll have our computer to stay connected. So that's our gift to you. And the gift just keeps on giving. Ronald Ellis. What's up? Next we got Austin Gosnell. We got my man, I'm so proud of him, Amari Green. Mar, Mar, you go. Oh, I thought you didn't want to die now. <laughs> yeah! <Woo>! <coughs> Next. 
next, my man, Jordan Hall. Boy, ain't them guys sharp in them suits. Look at them, boy. Woo! We got David Tallman. These guys pushed, man. I'm going to tell you, commitment. Donald was talking about investment, the greatest investment. Woo! When you invest in yourself, my man. Robert, what's the last one? Next, we got my man. Always on time. Robert Wesley. <laughs> their certificates in the uh, hall next door when we when we're eating okay um, if we could have uh, all of the partners come on up take a picture I get instructions on the go <laughs> it get like that sometimes all the partners <laughs> up front thank you First class, 
2023, MBK. Let's hollow it out, guys. Let's hollow it out. 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 Half time is over. Half time is over. The real show begins. On three. One, two, three. MBK! I'm feeling a little better now, less emotional as I was when I started. Um, but um, I want to thank everybody for coming out. I especially like to thank our MSK sisters for the support for us brothers, man. Um, it's needed. It's very, it's really important for us to support one another. Um, th this is a family, you know, and um, when, when and family come together, man, for a common goal for betterment in life for my and for me. Um, I'm so grateful for Miss Tony, my brother Step, my brother Teddy, who's not here, because um, as she said, when they call, I'm coming. And that's what they've done for me. It's every, not a time when I go see them, they don't say, man, are you all right? Do you want to talk? It's, it's not just about the program. They help you talk about life. And um, that's big for me. And, and that shows that they really care. So, so it, with, with this celebration today, it's like priceless for me to be, because where I was yesterday, that daggone show not there today. So, so I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for this opportunity. I'm grateful for the, for the time that we have invested in this program. I'm grateful for the time y'all invested in me. I'm grateful for the time that these brothers invested. I'm grateful for my boys of God this it, man. Hey, I'm telling y'all, man, these guys work every day. And I told them day one, the action that you show inside this program is going to define what you do when you walk out that door. Right? And I, I can honestly say that these four gentlemen that I work with every day have shown up every day in that program. Right? So I'm, much, I'm so grateful for y'all, man. Up to my brother Otis, Wesley, Omar. Man, I love y'all. Right? Listening to my man Donald. I was born and raised in 940. He come up in 950. Right? I'm talking next building. Know his mom, his dad, as he know my parents. And to hear him stand up here, see, because he he known over our way as the life, the youngest lifeguard, right? But watching him grow up and his development, man, I couldn't be more proud of you. And and for you to be in this space today, I thank you, man. I love y'all. I'm so grateful. I'm humble. I'm really lost for words. Tony just told me I gotta give some closing remarks. So I thank y'all to my sisters, to the family, for everybody who came off of each and every one of us today. I'm so grateful. Thank y'all. Tony, if you would come forward. Words really can't express, like, how I feel about you as being a wife. You was the first Christ, the first God that I seen in my life. And a lot of people look for many different things to fulfill them. I'm so grateful that God filled my void. And when I prayed and I asked God for courage and support and strength, that shirt I wear, I'm so grateful he sent me you. You've been my unconditional love. You've been my rock in the weary land. You've been my sugar in my coffee. You've been my cream. You've been my everything. I'm so grateful that God called you to this because he definitely called the right person. Me, Delvin, and Teddy just got these for you. It ain't much. We definitely got special things coming for you. I love you, babe. This is it. MBK 2023! If I, if I wouldn't thank my partner who's in absence, Co-op Arundel, Yasmin Jameson, 
is the nonprofit who partners with me to make this possible with funds. I want to thank Anne Arundel County Conflict Resolution, who has been with us since 2020 and comes and teaches our men about mediation, about anger management, about how to use feeling words. I want to thank Surge 30A of Annapolis. Because guess why? Some of the funds we can't use for things we need. I wanted to make sure that this day was special for our men. And I wanted to make sure they looked A1. And some of them couldn't afford suits. So you know what we did? We bought suits. Because that's what, that's what you do. So look, I want to thank Pastor Scott. Because when I go to Pastor Scott, and I'm like, <laughs> give it up! And I'm like, Pastor Scott, I have need of you. And he always say, Tony, what do you need? We gonna make it happen. And he's made it happen. And I'm grateful to the God in you that is paving the way for so many in our communities. And my motto is that I want to build bridges that connect us and tear down the walls that separate us. And today with MBK, it is a representation of what we try to do. Thank you to all the elected officials. Thank you to our collaborators, Gardenzia and Drug Court that are partnering with us to make sure that every man can be healed, whole, and set free. We got a special celebration in the room for y'all. Go eat, go be merry, go get some phone numbers, go celebrate. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna tell y'all something, right? That's a little funny. So when we had at um, MSK reunion, right? The ladies was like, who in that class? Cause we need some hell men. I'm like, y'all ain't ready for y'all yet. So look, no, all jokes aside, I am proud of each of you. When God tells me to do something, no matter how outlandish you say, sounds, I'm crazy enough to trust him. Because every time he tells me to do something, it always is A1. So I love y'all, celebrate, enjoy yourself, and go have fun. I feel, I want to say complete, and I've been going through a few things in the past couple of days, and I just made a phone call, and they've been there. Ms. Mr. and Mrs. Pratt, before I could even tell them exactly what was going on, they already knew, and it was already handled. So I feel as though this program is so amazing. And my eight weeks journey, was it was amazing. I was there every day on time and I love it. And if I had to do it again, I would. You know, you gotta be ready for it. You gotta be able to sit still and, and listen for the message. And you know, like they shared on the stage earlier, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So if I was to say anything to somebody joining MBK, would it be that there's a brotherhood here for the brokenhearted, where God's working amongst us to put us back together. And uh, that, you know, it'll, there'll be some healing and good people and another path formed out of what you can get from MBK and that the people under the 
extremely, uh, you know, extremely loyal and uh, open and uh, caring. Um, when I got in the MBK uh, through a program that I was in, um, I was in a program, you know, because I was, you know, going through a lot of legal issues. And, uh, you know, this guy named Del, when I, he came to me and asked me what I think about, you know, getting into a program called MBK. He said, I, uh, you know, because I show a lot of, I, sh I, I, I got traits of a leader, you know, I, you know, so, see, when I speak, people listen, you know. So, I, was, I guess that was something he's saying to me. So he, he, he wanted me to say, what you think about in the MBK? I said, what's the MBK? He said, my brother's keeping. I said, I'll give it a shot. One, since I got in there, since I got in MBK, I, I found out that he was, it's, you know, it's uplifting. You know, it's, it's, it's about uplifting each other. You know, brothers taking, uh, taking care of each other, you know, being there for each other, you know, being able to support each other, you know, lifting each other up, letting us know that we don't have to go back to the, the, our old habits and old ways and our old dealings. You know, letting us know that we're better than what we think we are, you know. They let us know they believe in us. They don't know, know us from Adam and Eve. So that's basically uh, how I got here. Uh, my involvement was uh, Step called me and asked me would I be a god. And I immediately said yes. Um, and he explained to me what I had to do and everything. It was no problem for me to come in. I think it was a, su a success. Um, I learned a lot as um, far as, you know, the, the topics and everything. And, it opened my eyes about being on time and and being one-on-one. -on -one. I'm good at one-on-one, -on -one, you know. And the guy that I had, you know, we was similar. And, um, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't do the drug game, but, you know, he did. But I understood what he was talking about and what he did and what I had to go through. I told him about how my problem and stuff coming up and everything like that. So, well, um... The interesting thing is, uh, I'll be honest, like Fridays, I was like, man, I'm going to have to commit <laughs> every Friday night for this eight weeks. The weather's getting warm, I want to be out doing stuff. And then um, I slowly but surely realized that that commitment and what I would be doing on a Friday night that I thought would be meaningful or fun just doesn't even compare. So the answer to your question in particular is I actually wish there was another extension of it or a part of it. Cause I feel like we touched the surface, got to some really good places, but I feel like there's so much more we can do to evolve and you know grow better with our relationships with each other, and maybe identify some opportunities for some next step stuff like jobs, um, resources, um, people need cars, and people need transportation places. So um, I'm overjoyed with the entire program. I actually can't wait to do it again. And um, I think it's uh, the best thing um, that has happened uh, in the city of Annapolis in a long time. Now, I'm not saying that to be like cheesy or, or say more, but I'll pose the question to anyone that watches this is, show me something else where an investment is being made into human beings who have falter and give them an opportunity experience new perspectives, new direction, hope, pride, joy, all of those things. It's like, number one, you can't put a price tag on it. And number two, that's the way we're going to move the needle and we're going to, you know, alleviate suffering in our communities, our neighborhoods and families is starting with each individual and collectively coming together. So I think it's the best thing since sliced bread. I, I believe it's a success. We've lost some along the way, but, but we still graduated more than half of our, of our starting crew. So it's a blessing to just see those guys graduate. Our role is to spend active participants. Okay. A coordinator, director is meaningless because we all go together. My past, it's one of the, one of the courts was my past is not my present. And I have a past just like they have a past. I just found God and found a different way to channel my pain. So by me doing understand that, I help them do the same thing. And after this, uh, we go back to the drawing board, man, and um, look for different ways, different, build a different curriculum, so that the next session be even better than this one. I mean, well, the reason why I would say Jordan is because we come around a great group of guys, our guidance, people behind the scenes, 
um, we have a great group of people that, that support us, and it's beneficial. It, it can give you knowledge of life, knowledge of self, and a clear understanding of which way to go, and, and can not continue to go down the wrong roads. Man, I just feel so uh, filled, so full, like, it's really like nothing else left to like get inside of me right now. Um, I thought I would feel like lighter and, and like like I emptied out a lot, but I'm just so full, man, with just seeing so much joy. Just seeing so many guys that came together, man, and were willing to invest in themselves, man, to make a change in their lives and just to open up and share that the intimate things, man, that they're going through and their goals and what they aspire to try and reach, uh, the attainable goals and the guiders, man, how they just really came uh, week after week and they was only really required to uh, come to four sessions out of eight. But they came week after week, man, because it's, it's the kind of atmosphere, man, where everybody can, like, eat. Everybody can, like, grab something, man, and take home. And not just take home for yourself, but you can take home, man, to your neighborhood. You can take home and share. And just to take a part of yourself and tell somebody your story and how you overcame. And that's what it's all about, man. Each one reach one, and we try and tell it each other, man. So we know that this story, this journey, that we think that like we all alone on this island by ourselves, because that's how it feels sometimes. Man, this journey, so many of us walking. Like one of the one of the our partners had said, he said, you know, what I found out that we was we had more alike than differences. And that's what it's about, man. It doesn't matter if you black, white, Hispanic, speak a different language, whether you Muslim, whether you Jew, whether you Greek, Gentile, Christian, whatever, man. We took a group that came together and came on one accord and set down religion, put religion aside and just work toward a common goal of just loving one another. I'm so proud of my MBK brothers. I look forward to continuing to work with them. I look forward to the future, just to see this, uh, this program. I don't even like calling it a program, but for lack of better words, I, I just can't wait to see what else is in store and where else does this is really go go because this is really bigger than Annapolis. I'm just so grateful, I'm so grateful for God, for using a little person like me. I'm so grateful for my wife. I'm so grateful for my Christian home, man, that really poured so much into me, man, that like, give me the opportunity and the liberty to go out, go ye there for, and make disciples. Go ye there for and tell somebody about the goodness and glory of God. I'm so grateful for Jesus in my life, man. You know, if I had time, I would really tell you my story and you will understand why I run around in church, why I give God praise, why I worship him the way I do. I just love him because he first loved me. Thank you and I appreciate everything that has taken place today. To God be the glory for the great things that he's doing. One, two, three. MBK! Yeah. Thank you.